Hello and welcome back to another one of my team guides. Today we are looking at League One or the English Third Division. We're going to be taking an in-depth look into three teams, Lincoln City, Sunderland and Burton Albion. After we've had a look at these three teams, we'll go through the usual things, so the squad rules, uh, youth academy scouting, player limits, stadiums and any signings that I think should be focused on if you're a League One team. So as I've just mentioned, we are going to begin with Lincoln City. So five years ago, Lincoln City were actually in the fifth division. Since then, with the Cowley brothers in charge, they've stormed up the league and now they find themselves in first of League One. It's looking very likely they'll be playing in the championship next season. And honestly, they're probably one of the most deserving teams in the whole of League One to be in this position. Lincoln likes to play a exciting counter-attack 4-3-3 with likes of George Grant, Liam Bridcut and Brennan Johnson starring and also Manchester City loanee Morgan Rogers becoming a important part of the team in recent weeks. The team is very young for League One with an average age of just 23 and a half and they do have a very small budget and not great stats in FIFA. So the real challenge is to try and match their performance that they have in real life in your game of FIFA. This could be a lot harder than it sounds of course, they do have an around a 65 rated squad on average whereas the likes of Hull have 67, 68 rated, same with Sunderland, who we're about to mention in a minute. So you really could have a problem trying to match Michael Appleton's performance that he's doing in real life. Thankfully, Lincoln's team is full of players who always play above their rating on FIFA. They've got a lot of high pace, high dribbling and high stamina players for the league. And of course, these stats do carry over pretty well, so they would also be pretty good in the championship. Unfortunately, Lincoln do not have a stadium in the game when they've never been in the Premier League, so you'll have to make do with the standard default stadiums, but it does look fairly similar to what Sinsel Bank looks like in real life. So, heading up north now, we're going to Sunderland. You might know them as being former Premier League regulars, but they're currently 6th in League 1. This is much worse than they were expecting to do, and of course you might have seen the Netflix documentary about them, which highlights some of the problems in the backroom staff. As you would expect with a former Premier League team at this level, they do have the biggest budget in the league. They have a couple of big names as well in Aidan McGeady and Grant Ledbetter, who have both been Premier League regulars in the past few seasons. Of course, McGeady has a trick named after him, so if you do choose Sunderland, make sure you can do the McGeady snip. While the Stadium of Light is in the game, the most difficult part of managing Sunderland is the total lack of potential in the squad. Only two of the players have potential over 70, which compared to even Burton Albion who are currently bottom of the league and we're about to cover, they have 8 for example. So there is a real lack of talent outside of the older players in the Sunderland squad. The average age of the squad is around 27 and they play a direct 4-4-2 which is an almost direct comparison to that of Lincoln City. Of course in FIFA you can change this to whatever you want, but I do prefer teams that are already set up for an attacking 4-3-3 because the player stats are usually a lot more fun. Like I mentioned, high pace, high dribbling is a lot more fun than high strength and high aggression, which Sunderland do have. Heading down south to Derbyshire now, Burton Albion are one of the smallest teams in the league. Despite this, they actually have one of the best training facilities in the whole of the UK. They train at England's St George's Park training facility which was built in Burton by the FA. A few seasons ago they found themselves in the championship, but now they're last in League One. With a team full of either very young players with high potential or very old players who have been at Burton for a long time, you'll have to decide between pushing straight away with these older players before the young ones develop, or waiting for the young players to develop before you try and make the push to get back into the championship. Of your first 11, 6 of them start off over 30 years old, including a 37 year old striker in Luke Varney. Their manager is Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, who's actually not that much older than some of the players, but the current fan favourite at Burton Albion at the minute is Lucas Aikens, who's the current record appearance holder with over 200 appearances since he joined in 2014. The challenge with Burton Albion is to try and get their underperforming and just generally bad squad up the league and try and survive the first season before pushing on in the second and third. So that's a couple of teams in the league that I think would be interesting to do a career mode with. You have the overachievers in Lincoln, where even the manager himself said mid-table was the goal, despite that they find themselves in first. You have Sunderland who really deserve to be at a higher level with their fan base and stadium, but they're struggling around the bottom of the playoff zone. And Burton Albion who have had some success in the recent years for their level, um, but find themselves bottom of the league and heading back down to League 2 if things stay as they are. 
So we're going to now move on to have a look at the squad rules, which thankfully the FA website is actually pretty thorough with. So you need to have 22 players, of which 8 are homegrown. So homegrown can be homegrown nation or homegrown club. Um, the actual FA website doesn't specify this, but I, I do believe it's homegrown nation. So all you need to have is at least 8 English players or 8 players who are trained in England to begin with, but that's a fairly easy one to follow. So in this 22-man squad that you have to submit, but obviously you don't in FIFA, no players under the age of 21 are counted. The only difference after the first season is this 22-man squad lowers down to a 20-player squad, and you still have to have the 8 homegrown players in your squad. These are fairly simple rules, you just make sure you don't have a bloated squad and make sure you're buying a few players domestically each season, which you should be doing if you do actually want to have a realistic League 1 career mode. With the academy, as I'm sure you're not surprised, most of the players in the league are English, so I would recommend scouting England. 520 of the League 1 players are English, with the next highest being Republic of Ireland with 46. Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland all have more than 20, and the most players from one country outside of the UK and Ireland is Australia with just 9. I would recommend you do send your scouts to one of these countries, even if it's Australia, Scotland and England, because you will get fairly realistic players for the level and there aren't too many Brazilians or Argentinians or Japanese players playing in League One, because of course they usually have a bit more ambition. So with your youth academy players, I would try and not train them to above around 65 rated until they're in their mid-20s. Um, I would also limit my player signings to 68 if I'm in a playoff team, 66 if I'm at mid-table, and 64 if I'm the lower half. This of course is just to keep it realistic, but if you do think that, that you can justify signing a 75 rated player, like I believe Aidan McGeady was when he joined Sunderland, then that's up to you to try and justify why they would want to drop down to League One. If you know a player is a Sunderland fan or a Hull fan or a Wigan fan and you think they'd want to leave their club to try and pull them back up the league, then maybe maybe that could happen. It has happened in the past. I think Leeds and Forest both had this when they were in League One a couple of decades ago. So while you're in League One, you will be playing at mostly generic stadiums. However, Sunderland, Hull and Portsmouth all have stadiums in the game that are fully licensed and fully modelled. This does make them the, probably the best teams to pick outside of Lincoln, but again, you won't really notice the stadiums too much until you get to the Premier League and you're playing in a different one each season. Finally, we're going to have a quick talk about the transfers that you should be making if you're in a League One team. So. The most common kind of transfer would be younger players from the Premiership or Championship on loan. Uh, maybe not the better ones, so you wouldn't get like of Harvey Elliott coming down to a League One team. He would probably go to a mid-table Championship team as he did in real life. But you would get a few going to this level. I've previously mentioned Morgan Rogers. He might not be ever Manchester City level, but he definitely has upper Premier League potential. So a League One move suits him well. If you can find a player like this to sign on loan, go for it. Another area that League One teams tend to sign players from is Scotland and Ireland. So if you can find maybe a younger to middle-aged Scottish or Irish player who you think would have ambition and want to play higher up the league, then go ahead and sign them too. I think that's a fairly realistic signing. And the final area you could probably sign players from is players from the Championship who are getting a bit old and maybe losing their legs a little bit. Some examples of this happening in the recent years is Ben Watson joining Charlton, Andrew Sermon going to Milton Keynes Dons, McGeady to Sunderland as previously mentioned, uh, Cameron Jerome going to MK Dons as well. These are all sort of older players who have been championship level players for most of their career but have dropped down as soon as they've hit around 30 to 35. So that's the end of my guide to League One. I hope you've learned a little bit about League One and some of the players that you can use, some of the teams. Um, I do recommend Lincoln probably the best. I think they're one of the most exciting teams in English football at the minute. The way they play, their story, the city itself is actually really nice too. So if you ever have the chance to go to Lincoln, 100% go. But yeah, if you have any questions about League One or Lincoln or anything about football, leave them in the comments below or ask me on my Discord, which I'll try to leave in the description too. If you want to see a few more league guides like this, then please subscribe and I will make a couple of these a week, combined with some other interesting football topics that I've been reading about usually that week. 
And if you liked this video and you thought it was helpful, feel free to give it a like because then it boosts it to a few more people and I get more views. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.